My name is Josh Miller. I own Riverstone Kennels, and I've been training gun dogs for more than 16 years. I have field trialed, I've hunt tested, but at the end of the day, I'm a duck hunter. You might find that the duck in our Duck Dogs podcast is spelt uniquely. The UK stands for my British labs. I love my British labs. I love what they offer me, both as a part of my family and the high motor in the field. As you're going to find, I have some pretty special dogs. Follow along in our podcast series here as we talk about both in the field hunting and in the field training situations that will hopefully help you progress with your dog at home. Welcome back again to Duck Dogs, everybody. I'm your host, Josh Miller. And before we get going, let's make sure we thank our wonderful sponsors that make this show possible. So thank you first and foremost to the presenting sponsor of the show, Yukonuba. Yukonuba Premium Performance Sport 3020 is the blend of food that I have my dogs on and my dogs at the kennel. And if you are looking for a high quality food to put your four-legged hunting partner on, I would highly suggest you looking into that. Everything from energy level to recovery time to coat to you, know, you name it, we've just seen such a tremendous um, difference in these dogs since we started feeding this food, and I can't say enough good things about www.yukanuba.com. Also, thank you to Sitka Gear. Sitka Gear is your premium option for outdoor clothing. As we head into the season, make sure you stock up so you are ready to be in the field for as long as possible. Let's be honest, none of us get as much time in the field as we want. Having the right clothing allows you to be in the field more comfortable for longer. www.sitkagear.com. Dot com. Also, thank you to Gundog Supply. Gundog Supply is your one-stop shop for all of your hunting and training needs for your four-legged hunting partner. Uh, they're great people, great customer service, great product selection, www.gundogsupply.com. Also, thank you to Kent Cartridge. As you go into the season, don't be the guy or gal that is stopping at every store on the way to uh, the hunting trip trying to find shells to scrounge up. Get ahead of the game. Stock up on it now, www.kentcartridge.com. I would highly suggest looking at uh, the bismuth. I love the bismuth. Um, but depending on what you are hunting, you may look for something different. But Kent Cartridge has you covered, www.kentcartridge.com. Also, thank you to Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck is your five-star crash test rated kennel, both in the intermediate and in the large, and now in the medium size. So no matter how big or small your hunting dog is, you can be sure that they're traveling as safe as they possibly can. www.luckyduck.com Thank you to Retriever Roadmap. Retriever Roadmap is your go-to option for if you are training your own dog at home. Video-based library will walk you through step-by-step. You get access to me to ask questions, uh, as well as you get uh, the community, which has just been fantastic. You get the strike teams, which is uh, opportunities for you to train on different grounds with different equipment with other people in your area. It's just such a great deal. So www.retrieverroadmap.com for as low as $29 a month. Pretty minimal. Great program, great uh, great community. Retriever Roadmap. Uh, last but not least, thank you to Gundog Grind. Gundog Grind is, uh, we love this coffee. And it's a coffee company that, cares about what we care about in our gun dogs. Uh, if you're listening to this, use the code duck dogs, D U K D O G S duck dogs. And you'll receive 15% off your order of gun dog grind, gun dog, www.gundoggrind.com. All right, gang. Um, okay. So we're here hanging out with myself. We have Eric and we have Zach. So we have three of our four members from uh, from the kennel. Um, if you are new to this kind of a segment that we started, yeah, we want to just kind of talk about a little bit of kind of like what's going on at the kennel. There's certain dogs, certain situations, certain training scenarios. Every week there's something that comes up we can talk about. So I want to bring these guys in and kind of, you know, changes the pace up a little bit for me. So we're not just talking to myself. <laughs> so uh, I love that. But uh, But we're down Dave. We're missing Dave. So before we get into Dave, here's what I want to talk about. So um, we were having a conversation before we hit record on this. <laughs> okay. So the the argument here that we're trying to debate on is um, Eric has a pop socket <laughs> on his phone. And if anyone knows what a pop socket is, the little pop thing that comes out the back of your phone so you can hold it better. <laughs> Zach's argument is that 
he holds the phone like a normal human being and doesn't need the pop socket. So, like, I'd love to hear opening statements on this thing. Well, I live with a bunch of teenage boys, and they keep me up to date with what is current. And I hold my... I mean, according to Zach, they've misled no. you on this one. <laughs> well, I think it's a young generation or old generation. Well, how many it's times not. does your phone fall off your hand? And on the ground. That's a good... Yeah, <laughs> Mine never it. does, because it's always on the... Po- I have my hand on the pop socket. And it fits nicely in my uh, my car, so that's... that's fair. It is his 50th birthday this weekend. 50th birthday in two days. It is. It's, it's your last couple of days in your 40s. I know. And both of you guys would have been my students at some point. I laugh about that, too. You guys, I would have both had you in class, so I think you should be addressed to me by Mr. (laughs) (laughs) Shelby. Is that scary? Like, end of an era? Oh, man. I hit the 40, which none of you two have. Yeah, it's getting not scary, but it's like, my time is getting shorter here on this earth. Yeah, it's getting scarier. So, Uh, I I I don't know. I'm thinking of... uh, I, so I saw this this comedic act. I think I told you about it. I can't remember what I saw on Instagram or something like that. And it's like this this guy in a cowboy hat that's a comedian. And he's talking about like his new reading glasses he's gotten. And he's like you know, the progressions of, of ordering off a menu because you can't see it, right? So like at 20s, you're here. And he has it like, I don't know, two feet off his face. And he's like, at 30s, you're here. He moves it farther. At 40s, you're here. At 50s, you're here. And he's like way out. And he's like, at 60, you just say, screw it. Give me the chicken Alfredo. <laughs> We just had a discussion. Whitney made some great business cards for us. But when you young folks make these business cards, you can read this stuff. I can't see some of it on there. So it's uh, it's get, it gets worse as you get older. I got a magnifying glass in his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anybody who has a pop socket, you guys have my back. You know how nice that is to have. <laughs> Jeez. This is just a peek behind the curtain of a day-to-day conversation at the kennel. Yeah, I mean, if you're filming us before we went live here, you guys, all this, these are the same conversations we have. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> pop socket. <laughs> now, you're, now we got to call you pops, not Bell because <laughs> the aid, but pops. the socket. That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, okay, so Dave is gone. We got to talk about about this for at least a second because we got to remember Dave. But it's actually, I think it's really interesting. I think I, yeah, I, I genuinely think it's interesting for sure. So Dave, for as long as I've known him, has shown draft horses, okay, Pergerons for anyone that is into horses, and he does the whole thing. Like he's like, like on the buggy, driving the team, does a single cab. <laughs> and have you ever seen a photo of this? Um, they're starting to surface now. I, I think it's at like we got to find, we have to find some of these photos. <laughs> And somehow, like, work them in, like, <laughs> subliminal messaging on social media. Because it's, like, the full-blown, I mean, it's it's an, it's an yeah. Amish get-up. Uh-huh. It, it's the the flat, the flat-brimmed Amish hat. It's, like, and Dave plays, like, the best Amish guy you've ever seen. I mean, I, it's it's pretty spectacular. He's pretty dang good at it, too. From he what, is. From what I see. Yeah. I mean, I've never been in that situation. So, I, I got to imagine it's a lot of talent to drive six of those. You know, big horses around a ring. I don't know. I mean, you know, he, he calls it the, uh, so he always has these like little one liners, right? <laughs> and, and if you never, if you know Dave's sense of humor, like he's not the guy who's going to like sit here and like try to be funny or like be boisterous or anything like that. So you just kind of like pick up yeah, his sense of humor. And he said something the other day of like, so the, what do they call the, the state fair, the great, the great get together. The great Minnesota get-together. Minnesota get together, get together right? yeah. And what did he call it the other day? Something about the big sweat get-together. Yeah, yeah the, the great Minnesota sweat together. Yeah. <laughs> He's staying there for three days. In and the stall, apparently. Well, he, <laughs> He's not sleeping in the stall. I asked him if he was going to go home. Because I grew up in Minnesota. I used to go to the state fair. There's places to sleep there. No, we stay right in the stall. <laughs> no, not, not in with the, the horse, stall. but they have like the horse area. Then they have another little area where you <laughs> sit. So when you go and look at the horses, you got your little area. He says he's sleeping right there. <laughs> and I, Jeez. I say you got a shower. He goes, yeah, they have showers here in this building. So yeah, what the he, horse hose? I don't know. <laughs> he's living the dream at the, at the. He does love it. Yeah, he does love it. I mean, I, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I think it's a great. You know, this time of year, you guys have seen it. This yeah. is a grind at the kennel. 
He loves it. It's an absolute grind. This is good for him to do. This is great for him to and do, if this especially this out, time of year. And if anybody's out there, if this, this gets out soon enough, he's doing this show on Saturday if you're at the State Fair. Yeah, so at today's, the Coliseum. Today's Thursday. It's Thursday. Right, so we're talking Thursday the 22nd of August, so yeah. we're talking 24th. Mm-hmm. He'll be there. So if you guys are out there, you can go see Dave go get dressed up and ride these horses around the Coliseum. I wish we weren't at the Oshkosh show. I would go. I 100% would go and it's see that. It's got to be impressive. Yeah. Because they got to actually take these horses down the road from the horse stall into the Coliseum, so they're driving by people. I go, yeah. are you running anybody over? He goes, well, I hope not. He goes, well, <laughs> because I got this new horse. I hope he, he does well at it. So, And the thing is, this isn't just like horse and buggy down the road. These horses are like in step, right stride, yeah. you know, squared away. Well, I think that's Haircuts, the show, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, the, yeah, the synchronized, you know, footsteps. Like that's part of it. I don't know if it is or not. I do know because <clears throat> I used to spend some time, especially back like when McKenna was growing and we had a lot more time. Um I would go over and help Dave once in a while. Which I can't. There have been numerous times that Dave's got a phone call that one of the horses is out, mm-hmm. and us two idiots are running like on a four wheeler. One of us running, trying to corral these horses. Like I mean, it's been a little chaotic at times. Um, we've always been successful, but there's been times I'm like, gosh, I'm glad nobody was out there with a the video camera. But like, just these are big horses. These are not like these aren't quarter horses. I mean, they're one, they're huge, but two, like. I remember him talking about how kind of like how they grade them is like how the step comes up. Like, I think like the more that they suck that foot, like all the way into their body on a stride is like more desirable or I, I shouldn't pretend like I know, but I'm just picturing Dave and his Amish get up sleeping in a stall, like with <laughs> well, the horses. He's not sleeping in his, that but that was, what that's said what you said. You, you, you said, said he's in the stall. Well, okay. I just know he's living at the fair. And Not, loving every second of it. Probably in a cot. I don't know. He We're missing it. you, Dave. Yeah, we are missing you. <laughs> Hope yeah. you kill it this weekend. Yeah. Wins across the board. Um, You know that Dave almost, he almost drove uh, for Budweiser. Or was it Wells Fargo? I think it was Wells Fargo. I don't think it was Budweiser. I think, I think it was Wells Fargo. Really? Yeah, that I was like, that. that was a thing that he was really thinking. So right, right when he started working for me, Kendall was super new at the time. I mean, it's a little nerve wracking because like, we don't know month to month what we're going to have in for training. And there was an opportunity that came up. I can't remember if it was like who was through, but there's an opportunity that came up that like he could have went and like basically almost like been like the apprentice for the people that drive the Wells Fargo. What I'm talking about. It's not a wagon, the Wells Fargo wagon. Right. And they go in like whether it's rodeos or, college football playoffs or like, you know, you guys have seen it, right? Um, Parades and the whole nine. Yeah. And I really, I honestly thought he was going to do it. I think it was because he didn't want to move away from home. I think that's like, yeah, I think Dave loves it around here. You know, I think he's grown up around here. He loves it around here. I think that's, I I shouldn't speak for him. We should actually ask him next time. Um, I never knew that. So yeah. Yeah. It it was a cool thing. Yeah. This is definitely something that, that he loves. He got away from it for a while too. You know, I think, his aunt and uncle are kind of the ones that kind of have him into it. So I think he was in it. And then they had some some personal stuff going on to where it was like they were going to get out of it. And so then he was kind of out of it. And then they were back into it. So he's into it. I'm just glad he's there because, I mean, I think we all just, like this time of year for sure, like kind of need that like mental break. That's why I brought up how busy we are at the kennel. Is like that's why it's great he's there. Like, man, take a few days for yourself. Take a breath, right? Just disconnect. Do your thing. We got it covered, right? Just like – you know, we're all going to do that at some point, right? Like, I think it's a great time for him. Isn't it funny, like, you take a break from something, but he's there working hard. Like, this isn't, like, I know he's going home sleeping on the couch, you know? You sleeping know, in a stall. He's, yeah, he's taking care of stall. horses all day. S- sleeping in the hay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Roughing it. Yeah. He's roughing it. I'm telling you, you think about that for all of us, actually. And I think you could say this with everybody that their hobby is hunting. Like, I think a significant other, especially, that doesn't get it, like, oh, you're going out, you're going on another hunting trip, you're going on vacation. Yeah, what does that mean? That I'm up crazy early, I'm up super late, I'm outside grinding it all day long. Like, it's not like you're going sitting on a hammock in a beach. Yeah. You know, I mean, now nah, that's what we choose. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think it's interesting. All right, let's talk dogs. Mm-hmm. I thought that was funny. 
Yeah, that's that's good, that's good, good little, good yeah. little intro. Hopefully, people enjoy it. We do, but it's, yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, at least it's we good think stuff. we're funny. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> we do think we're pretty funny. <laughs> like, yeah, we're pretty funny. Just ask us. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, all right. So first off, let's recap uh, Game Fair for those of you that were there. Thank you for stopping by and saying hi. For those of you that weren't, um, I, I I thought it was kind of slow. Like, I think weather definitely didn't help. That foot traffic was just different. Um, I do think that show ebbs and flows a little bit as far as attendance go. I think weather does affect a lot of it, being that it's an outdoor show. I also think that even like week the first weekend when it was really nice, you know, we've had a lot of hot weekends, like really hot weekends. Then it was like seventy and beautiful for three days. Like, I just think there's nothing different at the show as far as like if this was a Delta that travels, this was a pheasant fest that travels. Yeah. I think more of a priority to get there. I just personally, I think that's all it was. Um, but I definitely thought foot traffic was down. What do you think, Eric? Yeah. I've been there since I've been a little kid. I mean, it, you know, it's usually hot, really hot. I mean, we were talking upper sixties the first day it was 60 to 75 all six days. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think people are able to kind of pick and choose what days they came and they can just do any of them. Um, they do a good job of get letting the kids in on free on Friday. So we get a lot of kids coming through. Um, you know, it was interesting. It would be busy some days till one o'clock and it would shut off. Mm -hmm. Um, it was open till five. Um, you know, I don't know. I think it's, it's always the same thing all the time. I did hear there were some, newer vendors and i really didn't get a chance to go around maybe some of you guys did i don't know how many deals there are out there right now either you know it's just times are tough a little bit and people are kind of being a little sketch you know want to spend some money or not i think the, i think you're right about that i think that's a real thing <coughs> yeah, i asked a bunch of people if you saw some deals and nah, not really but i did not see i know people sold stuff mm -hmm. but i did not see people walking around with a ton of stuff like i normally saw before so um they, they just do a good job of there just having things to do yep. for the kids. You can shoot a gun, you know, they have great things for the dogs to run. And, um, but yeah, it was steady, but it's, it's, it's long. I mean, the two weekends for us, I think today is day 18 in a row for us working, going back to, I go on back to August 5th, obviously I work on Sundays, mm -hmm. but you know, we're going to go all the way till this Saturday in Oshkosh. And so mm -hmm. it was long, but it's, I've always enjoyed talking to people. Mm -hmm. This is my first year there, so yeah. What do you think? I thought it was good. I like I like going to stuff like that just because it's like everything that I'm involved in, you know. So it's cool to walk around, but I'm also not a huge shopper. Like if I want something, I'll just order it, you know, or just go buy it, you know. So just going around shopping is what it is. But I enjoyed meeting a lot of people, met a lot of people, talked to quite a bit of vendors, made some good connections. So I thought it was cool. I yeah. I enjoyed the show for sure. Yeah, it, it is a cool show, especially the uniqueness of it's outdoors, the dog aspect of it. There's so many dogs. Oh, crazy amount of dogs. Yeah, I, I think it's cool. I really do. I just I just think it was down as far as traffic goes, which was interesting to me. So I don't know. I, th I do think. What do, I, you, what do you, sorry to interrupt. What do you think numbers wise? Like, I mean, it's going to be hard to say numbers, but it's it was significantly down or. Typically, when you go there, there's a long line of people waiting. Mm -hmm. That wasn't that every day. One one day hundreds. I noticed. Yeah. One day was a long mm -hmm. line. Second Saturday, I think. Second Saturday. Um, I just, it's so hard, like so hard to judge because maybe if you were at the front, maybe it would you get a better yeah. feel for it. But like so many people disperse right through the show. I just, I don't know how you'd figure that. Yeah, but. I think what Game Fair does do a good job is they're they're pretty, I, I think anyway, fairly transparent as far as like this is what the numbers were, this is what it looked like. I don't know what those numbers are, but like, I mean, some of these shows, you know, they'll announce at the end of every show, and it was a record attendance, and that's great until you know for a fact it's not. It's a record attendance. You're like, okay, yeah. that's not true. You know, um, I'm yeah, I'm I'm it'd be interesting to know for sure. Um, what uh, what kind of stood out to you at Game Fair? Well, <laughs> being that we're in the training business, I cannot believe how many different sort of harnesses and collars there are out there that people walk dogs on. 
I just saw so many different types. <coughs> and um, I don't know if they keep inventing new ones or what, but, you know, our simplistic our RPM one does, does, does the trick. But, um, you know, and with that, there were some struggles with people walking dogs, as, as you can imagine. Yeah, I, I see that too. I think there's always a gimmick. There's always a, hey, this is the next best thing. I don't know. What is the halter? You mean around the nose? Yeah. The idea is you control their head. And I think there's some validity in that for a certain dog. What I don't like is when I I think, so I don't have enough work with the, the, you know, that type of a system. But I do believe that there is a proper and an improper way to use that tool. And the improper way actually restricts their nose from being able to open, which makes it to where they can't openly breathe, which makes them, they can't pant. And when you're walking out on a hot day on blacktop, what does your dog need to do? Yeah. Right? So, like, what I, I, there was one person in particular that I, we actually ended up just taking it off. And I was like, hey, are you noticing your dog? And the dog's like, <laughs> trying to breathe out the side of his, you know, like, anything he can, like, to breathe, just because that thing was, like, so tight around his nose. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's think about this. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, what about you? Any, any like, specific like things that stand out? Mm, I don't think so. I, I kind of agree with you. Like, you just see all kinds of different dogs, the way people handle dogs. Nothing nothing really stuck out to me. I can't believe you did get did that game. And not only did you do the game, Eric, you were, like, obsessed about trying to win that game. Well, And there was someone there who was more obsessed than Eric was this year. Golly. For those who are wondering what he's talking about, they have these timed events for dogs. And I've got an older dog, Scout, that's pretty fast. So. She's not that old, though. She's three. I'm sorry. She's my oldest dog. Yeah. So I've been going to this since a little kid, so I'm like... I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to win it. So last year, I took third place in the entire six days. So this year, I'm not going to do it. I got it out of my system. So Friday goes by, I don't bring her. Saturday goes by, I don't bring her. Now Sunday comes of week... Weekend number one, and you can see this thing from our booth. And so you I'm know watching he's been looking at I thought, it. I thought you brought her Saturday. No, okay. I'm watching these people around. I'm going, okay, I can't take this no more. So, <laughs> the deal is, you run the dog in this timed event, and then if it wins the event that day, you come back for the finals. Well, every day I got beat. Like I'd have eleven point or ten point seven seven. Somebody do a ten point seven, and it was. He'd, I, be I stay, I, he'd be standing up there with those tickets again, <laughs> again, again, so, again, again. So anyway, and there was some people there. I mean, I'm doing it for fun. I'm competitive, but there were some serious people that wanted to win that thing. And um, so uh, she never did qualify for the finals, but had some good runs. But yeah, I mean, I'm right there. So I just something for the dog to do. The first time I saw Eric go up there, I'm walking back to the booth. And he goes, I know I'm going to screw her up. Just let me go. Well, so what he would do is he'd let her break because it was a faster time if she went and broke. I I can fix that. I mean, not, I, I, sh- yeah. I shouldn't say let her break. Yeah. You were sending her when he I was, was still airborne. Early, yeah. But, uh, yeah. He goes, there's a strategy around yeah. this. Coach, so, yeah, coach was little, X's and O's in his head. I got yeah. a little sucked into that. but uh, And he knew exactly if it was going to be fast or not. He was like, <laughs> nope, this ain't it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that's funny. But, yeah, so had that. Another thing I had that I was, you know, we had Phoenix there, my, my dog. Um, a little bit about her. She's one. Um, she's from the Clyde Litter. Beautiful looking girl. Clyde. Clyde Luna. Luna, oh yeah. Luna's the dark red. So now you got right. this really dark red female, very good looking, and unbelievable, did an unbelievable job for us sitting on place board and just calm, quiet, under mm-hmm. controls, exactly what we breed for. Yeah. But I was amazed at how many people would walk by and just be mesmerized by the look and the color, and yeah. that was sold right there. Yeah. How many people go by that? Oh, yeah. And now you add in this calmness. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. Um, she, I got offered three different times to, if I asked if she was for sale. But uh, I was just amazed how many people would color. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's a popular color. but Oh, for sure. And, and that's why, okay, so I've been, I've been um, I think, pretty notorious about talking about specifically on this show that, mm-hmm. like, red isn't a color. Mm-hmm. It's not. But I also have nothing against somebody that likes that color. Mm-hmm. 
Like the, the thing that I don't like is when a breeder is breeding specifically for that color or any color for that matter, because then other things naturally have to go out the window as far as what you prioritize and what you're trying to get out of this breeding. If it's just for color, you're going to overlook a lot of things. You're going to let a lot of things slide. And all of a sudden it's rose colored glasses, you know, through like it, it just can't. But now you breed the right dogs for the right reasons. You get that color. Heck yeah. Game on. Love it. I honestly don't even care like when people say red, it doesn't bother me because that's how you identify it. Like I would say if I were to compare Phoenix versus Augie, who's a very light yellow, I would say like if we were just talking about those those two dogs, I'd say, you know, the red one versus the white one. Right? Like that's not their color, they're yellow. Right? So I think there's been some misinterpretation on that as far as like, you know, people taking that a little too literally of like and it's right, like Like, is black, yellow, chocolate. Like, those are the colors, right? So there's not a red. But I'm fine with you saying red to identify it. What I'm not fine with, personally, is just bringing specifically for color. Don't like that at all. That's what I had a sense. People thought, oh, I want that color. I said, no, Luna was a dark red. She was. That's why you have this color. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't care what color she is. She'd have to be the same, you know, Mm -hmm. temperament, whatever. But, um, um. It's just a really nice breeding, mm-hmm. that whole uh, litter. So, yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah, that, that's that's been a good one for sure. And she, I mean, shoot, I didn't plan on using her in the seminar, but when I came back to get my older dogs to go put on my demo, and I saw her at however months months old she is, sitting there on that board, looking around, kids pulling at her ears, other dogs like jumping up on the board by her, and she's just like sitting there looking at. Them, I'm like, this is what we should be talking about. Why are we going to talk about blinds? Why are we going to talk about casting in the water? Why are we going to talk about all that stuff when when I look around, the majority of dogs won't do this, mm-hmm. right? The obedience, that's what's making this whole thing you know, go around, and that's what we have to really talk about. So I know my seminar is probably a little more boring because of that, but it's the truth. It's I think there's a lot of good inf- Yeah, I think there was a lot of good information. I mean, people want to be entertained. We could entertain, but, you know, it's informative. Most of those people are there to learn. I was one of those people for years. I'd sit down, Zach's the same thing. I mean, those, are the, those are the type of seminars that I learned from in the last few years, so I thought you did a good job with that. And mm-hmm. She was perfect for the fact that she's only one, and she's doing this right here, and and um, you did a good job of talking about obedience there, mm-hmm. which is the foundation. For sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, all right, so let's talk about some training scenarios. Okay, so like this week when you look at – First off, like, what kind of, like, I think Whitney has longer shorts than what you, like, what is going on? You got to tan those legs, bro, if you're going to, you know, be oh, flexing no, those no, things no. on me. Good grief. Don't talk about my legs. <laughs> you have wider legs than I do. Mine glow in the dark. <clears throat> uh, you got these athletic shorts that are, like, riding up on them in the chair. Well, like, I there was a shine coming from, yeah. like. All these lights in here. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off your tan line. That's right. Um. So, like, is there anything, Zach, this week that, like, pops out at you? It's like, okay, dogs we were training. Anything that, like, pops up from a training scenario standpoint that's, like? Um, I think, so, Willow. Yeah. She went home. Mm-hmm. And so what we've been doing, we've been working water blinds, like, just building a pattern. She swims right across, and then we'll work on casting in the water, right? So that's all she's seen. But since she was going home this week, we talked about, how she was going to get trained while she was home and how to progress. And not everyone has access to a tech pond and, Mm -hmm. and all this. And we went out and tried it on a lake and just sent her right at the open water. And she went first time. And I think that was a true Testament to like building that solid foundation as far as like the repetition of going these short distances, short distances, you know, always getting rewarded for, for going. And then you go and apply it somewhere where people are going to have an opportunity to train at. And to see it just work the first time, that was really cool. And I I've, I pay attention to that stuff more because, you know, like working in the back, working on whistle sets, you know, you're up and down, up and down, whistle, stop, whistle, stop, whistle, stop. And then you go out and you're running five point and you blow that whistle the first time and they dig down in the ground and mm-hmm. spin around and face you. Like those are the kind of things that, that I really am starting to love. I mean, I've always loved it, but like now I'm really trying to dial in and think about those things. So those building blocks, and that is what I've really been enjoying. So seeing Willow do that mm-hmm. was really cool for me this week. Yeah, so let's talk through that a little bit because I think that's interesting. So um, the first, let's, let's back up one more. 
because I think we saw a very different response out of Willow that we did uh, Duchess. Okay, so we had two advanced owners come this week. Uh, one was just a check-in, one was a pickup, and I think we had two very different results uh, between those two dogs. So we had uh, Duchess, who I felt like was an absolute rock star in what she's doing. She's crushing her lines. Her stops are right now. She's handling her cast. You know, she's starting to work into you know those cold blind setups. She's doing great, but bringing her owner back into it made her really sticky. Like, I mean, she kept wanting to like square up, like even on a heel side, she was like overly lovey dovey is the best way I can push. She was like so emotionally. Oh, Babs, why am I talking about? You can say you don't have to well, whisper it to me. Well, all these, the, sometimes these dogs all yeah, jump yeah, together. Yeah. Babs, you're right. This was Babs. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, so Babs was just like, she's so lovey dovey around Riley that, I mean, it's not Riley's fault, but she's like losing her mind going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, dad's here. So even like healing, like she's wanting to like square up and look at him and like, you know, that emote. Now we gave him some time to get that emotion worked out of her and then she came back and did really well. But I still don't think she performed as crisp as she did for me just right before right. that. Yeah, I right? agree. Now Willow, I think was the exact opposite. I think she worked better for Brittany than she did for me. I agree. I think she elevated. It was like, hey, mom's here. She still had a little bit of those kind of jitters, but like not nearly what Babs did. And walked right into it. And I thought Brittany did a great job with handling. I thought her confidence continued to grow as she went through, you know, you know, land pattern. Then we went to, you know, water blinds. Then she went to land blinds. And we went, you know, like everything was great. So one of the things that we do struggle with is when we send dogs home, what is it that people have the opportunity to train with, right? So like property-wise more than anything. And so one thing that Brittany had mentioned was that the most opportunity they have for water work is like at a boat launch into the middle of a lake. And that can be really difficult from a training standpoint. Like for us, we're always sending them, excuse me, we're sending them across the water and driving to the other side. And then we can set up where those, you know, where those, you know, blinds are set and, you know, we can't have everything very under control. Obviously, if you throw a bumper out in the water before sending the dog, first off, the wind can blow it anywhere. And then two, the dog's likely going to see it, right? I mean, it's going to, at some point, it's going to see this thing floating in the water and just going to want to drive to it. And so one of the things that we started doing is we started putting a, a heavier bumper, the heaviest bumper that I can find just because you tend to be able to get more oomph behind it. And which is a two inch rubber and sport dog used to make it, but I don't think they make them anymore. Um, so anyway, two inch bumper. And then I put my own um, rope on it, which is just an extended rope. And it really depends on the size of the person. Like, so we measured ours out specifically for Brittany and her height. So for me and for Zach, it'd be longer. Um, Eric, Eric could be, Eric could be a little, a little, little shorter, a little same size of Brittany. <laughs> Well, there's no, there's no laugh on that one out of, out of, uh, old pops. Uh, um, so we, we, but the idea is, is as, as much oomph as you can get. Right. So when we went down to the lake, which was simulating the, the boat launch, she lined her up, she sent her back and she went back, right. Just like her training has told her to do go back in a straight line, except, I mean, she would just swim to the other side of the lake, right? Like we have no way of working on this. So send her back. She's swimming. She's swimming. She's swimming. She's swimming. And then I threw that bumper, land right over the top of her, you know, another 20 yards and splash. So the idea was, is get her thinking almost like she was going out on a cripple, right? Send her back. She swims, 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 swims. And all of a sudden the reward just pops up. Kind of the same idea. If I just keep trusting this, there will be something here that comes up. And, you know, otherwise, like for those guys, and I'm telling you, that was a creative, I'm just going to make something up kind of thing. Um, but I had to get creative on how am I going to take, you know, these dogs are doing so well on the tech ponds, send them home with somebody that only has access to this exact thing, just a wide open lake, and how they can still do something. Like, is it the same as working on tech pond? No, of course it's not. But at least it's something. It's some sort of water work that they can do, especially because they're still going to have a hot 
30 to 60 days in front of them. Yeah. So they're going to need to do water work, <clears throat> right? It's just like hand throwing 30 yard marks into the water isn't progressing or any. Yeah. So, um, anyway, that was kind of what I thought what it was cool to see about. for sure. It was cool to see, especially the training. I mean, I told, I was very open with Brittany. I was like, like, we've never done this. So this is going to be completely new. We may have to work through this. She just, her training carried through. Boom. Right. Yeah, it was fun to see for sure. I thought that was really cool to see, you know, like in, in both Riley and Brittany and Jeremy, like we love all those guys. Like, so like when I used that comparison, it wasn't that Riley was doing anything bad. It was just that, I mean, Bab just adores. Yeah. She melts him. for him. Oh my gosh. Like, like, I think I told him, I was like, oh, okay, like, it's getting a little sickening now, you know, <laughs> just like, oh, all over. Um, but, I mean, from a, our standpoint, like, we want the dogs to want to go home as far as, like, we want them to love them. Like, if they hated them, like, they're probably a little red flag for us, right? So, I, I think that was that was really neat. Um, and one thing that I thought was really cool, too, is we have a dog named Winston. And Winston is, do, they, do you guys know how old Winston is? Oh, I'm gonna guess Winston can't be more than two years. Not even no, that. I don't think no, he's, no, he's no. not even. No, not he's even. like no, he's not nine definitely. months. No, is he no, that no, young? No, no, he was ten months and in intermediate. So I would say so we're like all over the board here. Uh, yes, he's year and a half. he's under a year and a half. Okay, fifteen months old maybe. Sixteen. Months? Scott's sitting here like, how do you guys not know this? <laughs> Sorry, we're, Scott. We're, we're gonna say thirteen to fourteen okay. months. Fair, fair, but fair ballpark. Fair ball. 13 to 18. 13 to 18. <laughs> 13 to 18. Um, anyway, he's young. And he he has progressed so quickly and so well. I think what's been cool about the relationship with Scott is that, like, he's like, because we started to see some of the adolescence this last week. A little bit of that that puppiness kind of come out of, like, ah, you know. And, like, I, I called Scott. I was like, hey. I wonder if we pump the brakes here. Like he's been going nonstop. Like he's been in training. Basically he went home for that couple weeks, but I mean, he went through all of intermediate, right? Starting in March Correct. to end of June was home for a couple weeks mm-hmm. and then came back with you. Yep. I mean, so he was home for what, like two weeks all summer. I mean, it wasn't long. Mm-hmm. So I just think he, like I'm looking at him as long term, Right. Let's, he has a fantastic foundation right now. Mm. He's carrying his lines. He's doing a great job with his casting work. He's doing like, but he's not done. But it may be time to pump the brake on it and just say, "Hey, let's go." I think I think there's something to be said about a dog just needs a hunt too. Like, and I'm not saying this about necessarily him, but like some of these dogs, I think like Bella, like Bella needs a hunt. Yeah, I she's agree. gotten to a point like she's kind of over the training stuff, like repetitiveness. It's over and over and over. Like she needs to go hunt. Just get feathers, get excited again, get back going. Um, Winston, I just love Scott's long-term approach. We don't get to deal with that very often. Hey, this is long-term. Hey, if I if I need to pump the brakes now, we, we start this back again next summer, let's do it. If it's going to take the summer after that, let's do it. Like, that. there's a re- one, that dog's going to be a superstar anyway. That dog is so dang good. But that long-term mindset and approach – that is what is going to almost ensure he is going to be a superstar instead of trying to force that all this year. And I think that's the best approach, especially with the way Winston is. Mm-hmm. Like, because you could – he's going to keep going and going and going. Like, you could burn him out as yeah. far as, like, mentally because he's just going to – he's not going to stop. Mm-hmm. And That's why I, I said on the phone to him, too, is, like, it's tempting just to keep hammering on it. Yeah. You know, like because, like, he's showing a little bit of that adolescence, but, like, he also hasn't stopped. So it's tempting just to go, go, go. I think the hardest thing is always pump the brakes. Yeah. Until you get into season, I think it's easy to do it then. But, like, before season, especially right now, and it's like pregame, it's hard to pump the brakes right now. He'll be a better dog for it. Oh. I can't wait to see what that dog turns out to be. Me either. Yeah, Got a good one, Scott. Yeah, he's going to be a real deal for sure. All right, guys, what else you got? I got that inter- intermediate class now. We finally have them off the table. You know, we were just discussing today a little bit about we got some more work to do today, but now we're kind of getting into the fun stuff. We've done the boring obedience. Dave's done a good job with that table, and now we're starting to do the retrieve, so I think this is kind of the fun part. We had most of the owners in last week. That was fun. 
I think we do an awesome job of training the trainer. Um, you know, a lot of the owners even brought their kids in, and we just got them all dialed in on how to walk, and so they're all on the same page. So, um, you know, we're kind of in the middle of that class right now, so I think that's been fun, run, fun, mm-hmm. fun to see play out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. What What have you thought about that from a – It's in, this is an interesting question to me. Mm-hmm. So we all know that obedience is boring. It's repetitive. Table work is boring and repetitive. It's all necessity. It all has to get done. Do you find that owners enjoy the updates less during those times because it is boring? I don't think so. I think the updates are a chance for them to see their dog, but I think they have trusted us that we are going to do something with their dog that they just don't have the time to do. And I think for them to just have them walk at heel, because these are family dogs to begin with, and some will hunt more than others, but I would say for them to drop off a dog that's pulling on the leash, and then Mm -hmm. when they come in three, four weeks, and now it's walking by your side, I think that progression of updates they have seen each week, I think they really enjoy it. Let's be real. I I think... If, if every dog was obedient, I think owners would be happy mm-hmm. 95% of the mm-hmm. time just with that. Like, of course, we always exceed that, Correct. right? But, like, <clears throat> that's the one thing that I just keep going back to. Nobody wants to hear that part. Nobody wants mm-hmm. to see that part because it is boring. I get it. But, like, it's so important. Yeah, it's the most important That's thing. why Phoenix was such a wow at the show. She sat on a board. Yeah. Think about that. She sat on a board. It was quiet. Didn't jump off. Didn't make noise. Like, yeah. Wow. To paint this picture, too, is she was part of your seminar, and while you're doing the seminar, she's sitting in the background. There is gunfire going off. Mm-hmm. Like, within 100 yards, she can see the bumpers in the air, and she was tracking them, and she held, I mean, she, you know, this this was a test for us, too. We didn't know, and she didn't break once on that. But that goes back to when I first had my hands on her at eight, eight weeks of old, you know. You know, there's training in there, but... Um, it's it's a lot of work, but now the fun starts, mm-hmm. and it's just fun to have a dog like that. And that's our hope to provide that with all the uh, with all the owners. Mm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, okay, I know that we all have a bunch of work to do at the kennel yet, but I appreciate you guys taking the time to come over here, help me knock out an episode, and talk about some of the stuff we have going on. We are going to be in, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, at the Wisconsin Waterfall Hunters Expo. I think I have two seminars. I think Whitney has two seminars. We have the Retriever Roadmap booth. We're going to be ha- we're going to have Gundog Grind Coffee available at our booth. A lot of cool things going on. Yeah, I like that show. I was there for the first time last year and mm-hmm. well attended. It's a one day show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, people. It's a kinda, fun one. It was a really good one. Yeah, it was for sure, no doubt. So, anyway, hope you guys have a fantastic week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes. And a special thank you to Yukonuba because without them, we couldn't do what we do here, bringing this information to you.